break for just two minutes. I'm not going to go anywhere. Um, I just need to hit the head right quick, basically. Um, when we come back, we are going to launch this rocket. We are going to talk again about the launch profile in more detail. I'll catch the bracketing burn question from a brain fried there. And uh, let me just hit the head right quick, get a refill on Dr. Pepper, and I will be right back. In fact, I think I'll just leave it to this. Um, and, uh, no, 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 no. Here, I'll go with Das Valdez. We'll be right back. Because then I can totally do... Be right back. I can totally do... Wow, that's not right at all, but that's okay. I can totally do this. I will be right back, y'all. Let me just hit the head. Take a break right quick. Introducing Amazon Fire TV, the easiest way to stream your favorite movies, TV shows, and more. Just use your voice to tell Fire TV what you want, and your favorite content streams instantly. Amazon Fire TV. Say it. Watch it.
and I'm back. Let's see here. We got that. Da -da 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 -da. <clears throat> Just played some music while I was over doing my things. But I'm back. Did I miss anything in the chat? Let's see here. I wonder how... <laughs> Jeez, I can't preview something. I wonder how terrible this is going to look. Let's actually look right quick. Oh, not so bad, actually. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. I thought the green screen on this would be a lot worse, but it's not too bad, actually. Let's see here. Okay, better. Ah, it's fine enough. Yeah, it's... You know, we're recording in a bedroom here. So... Thanks for hanging out while I went over to the thing. I wonder if the music is really loud. But uh, let's get back to Kerbal Boot Camp. We're going to get this thing into orbit. We're going to talk about some of the more complex topics on the thing with the rocketings. I'm getting caught up here. Let's go over here. All right, now I'm good. Sweet. So we had just said we put together this rocket. And uh, we were building in some extra wiggle room, basically, right? We had a 3051 Delta V with 1.7 on the pad. That was important. Let me see, am I on the right stream? Yes, I am. Just make sure I'm doing it right. Then we have more than 1.5 here with 1.57. We could, hmm, we could do it differently, but that's okay. Basically, this engine is just too strong. There's not a good middle-of-the-road engine that I've ever seen over here. But we'll be fine. Let's do the 30s. Let's launch this puppy right quick. And then I will come back and we'll talk about some other... Uh... Wow, I wasn't even scrolling the chat. Let's see here. Let's launch this thing, then I'll come back and check the chat. And then we will do something with the SRBs that we're talking about. So, let's launch it. And see if we can get this one to, to space. Again. As I go through this stuff, oops, music. <laughs> there we go. All right. I mean, I like the music, but uh, let's focus on this. Again, as I talk through this, there are some very easy numbers to write down. Um, starting off here, panel lock, SAS engaged, T on the keyboard. Let me shut that up. Oh, there we go. SAS lock, panel lock, SAS engage. Flight engineer is good to go. Our staging looks good to go. We're really good. 1.69 on the pad. That's basically 1.7 on the pad. Let's launch it. And again, we're going to go through the same profile. 5,000 feet, 150 meters per second. Write it down. It's so easy. 5,000 feet, 150 meters per second. And I am just going to go straight up. And you'll see we didn't quite take off as fast that time, which is cool. And I'm going to go straight up until... <laughs> what? <gasps> I get to 5,000 feet. We'll check the speed. I hope the speed should be right around 150. That is our checkpoint. 5,000 meters, 150 meters per second. 2,000 meters. Yeah, we're going to come in a little bit fast, but that's okay. And 4,000 meters is at a buck 45. It's going to be real close. 150, 160 is okay. Between 150 and 160. That's close. We're going a little bit fast. But we're good. That is what we needed. That's because this rocket is not very much payload at all. Next checkpoint, 10,000 feet. Sorry, 10,000 meters. Um, going 260. We're going to be going faster than that, but that's going to be okay. We're going to be close to it, right? And that's what's important, that we're close to 260. We're not going 400 is the point. There is 10,000 feet at 275 is the number I saw. Start your gravity turn. Lean to the west. Sorry, lean to the east. That is the D key. And just tap the D key. You can see my keys tapping over there. Tap the D key until you pull that vector on down this way. In fact, we may need to turn a little bit faster with this rocket. Because it's got lots of thrust to weight. There we go. Mugo, dude, take it easy. I just, I just happened to glance at the chat. Thank you so much again for the donation, Mugo. We'll see you next time. Hope you had fun. I appreciate you hanging out. Let me go fly this rocket, dude, but take it easy. There's 50. When it gets to 50 in the apoaps, we turn and burn. We point down closer to the horizon, and we want to put a bunch of speed into orbital. Hey, look, it's the moon. We could actually go straight to the moon. 
Um, we want to put a bunch of speed into orbital velocity here. Until we get up to, call it like 80. Wow, it stopped exactly at 80. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Let's go ahead and ditch that stage. There's 80. Now you may see something that's happening here, right? I had it set to 80, but it's going down. Why is it going down? We're still a little bit in the atmosphere. We haven't completely got out of the atmosphere. That's slowing our craft down a little bit with atmospheric drag. And that is okay. I just put a little bit higher than 80. We're getting up out of the atmosphere now. It's not slowing us down nearly as much. But that's why you're like, what the heck? I had a 75 apoeps, and then when I got up there, it was only 60. What the heck? It's because you looked at it when you were deep down in the atmosphere, and the atmosphere slowed you down as you tried to get up to that thing, so you didn't get quite as high. Here we are in space, basically. Um, 80,000 meters. We go to the map view. Same story, right? But we have a lot of delta V in this rocket, because basically that stage got us to uh, where we needed to be. We put that there. We make it so we can see the planet. Let me get rid of these things. We pull on the green marker until we see the periaps. There we go. We wait for the periaps to switch places. There we go. Apoaps 86 versus 80. That's a little too high. Let me show you something right quick, something we can do. That one's 79 by 80, right? Um, if you want to get it more circular, you can play with these radial in and radial out buttons. The long and short of it is you want the apoaps here to stay on your node. You want that apoaps to stay right there and then you want to give it a little bit more. There we go. So that's 80 by 80. Um, if you let the apoaps get around here and you're still pulling prograde, that means that you're going to be going into an elliptical orbit. Um, but again, all I did, what's my time to burn? 32, 22 seconds. I gotta burn. I can't talk about it now. <laughs> and then we point at this. Half a 32 is 16, so we burn right freaking now. All the way up. Again, that was going to be a 1,000 meter per second burn, but we had 1,700 in the tank because this rocket had a lot of overhead in it. So we are going to have 800 left over there and, jeez, 1,200 left in the rest of the rocket. We go to the moon in this rocket, honestly. But again, I'm just doing the burn, and I want to cut this down until that happens. And then we're in a pretty much circular orbit. 84 by 79. Don't worry about it if it's not exactly 80 by 80. You're still in orbit. <laughs> really? Really, Luis? <laughs> you think it's the atmospheric drag? I wouldn't know. Um, yes. T-game. <laughs> T-game. Um, I will. Oh, Orchium came in. I will show that. I will bring that up on the surface tab and show that when we get over to the SRBs here. So I'm going to make something that has more than 1.7 using SRBs. We're going to launch it into orbit, and then we are going to watch the uh, atmospheric efficiency tab. That is an excellent idea, idea T-game. <laughs> Can I call you T-game? Can I go with T-game? There was a bunch of talk about solid fuel boosters, right? So we've made orbit how many times? We still have freaking 2,000 meters per second of delta V. We could do a lot with this rocket. Minimus is in our grasp. A lunar flyby, a lunar orbit and return is in our grasp. There's a lot of stuff that we could do with this rocket, but let us revert the flight because we keep like into space. Screw you, into space. Nope, you don't get to go to space today. Um, let's go back to the VAB and let's talk about these solid boosters, right? Oh, I'm scrolling that again. Jeez. We could probably land on third. You know, Thedor, we could probably land on Kerbin with that craft. We could probably do it. In fact, I would ditch the rest of it and I think we could land with that craft. Um, let's see here. I was going to... Ah, so I built this without solid boosters. I basically just tossed these things onto the side, right? What if we were to design this thing with solid boosters? Remember the, the engines I talked about that don't actually use fuel tanks? They're the solid boosters. Like you see on the side of the old STS, the space shuttle, the big white engines that were solid fuel boosters. Um, the good thing, good thing about... So <laughs> Baconella! Welcome to Kerbal Boot Camp. We're going through... I've never flown a rocket before. We're going to be ending this stream with landing on the moon space planes solar stations I don't even know we'll have a <laughs> we'll have a station that has a space plane that also has a lander that goes to the moon maybe I don't know um, but this is Kerbal boot camp we are making less mystery concerning Kerbal space program it's not that hard to play just a couple basic things to understand how they work and uh, you can get into space you can do all sorts of stuff GoPro gaming dude that's actually a really good idea GoPro <laughs> I should have a hell like a thing on my head and then I'll like <laughs> it's like a heart rate monitor and a GoPro camera. Flynn is your run. Flixy. Flix. Flix. I'm going to call you Flix. Dude, GoPro Gaming and Flix, both thanks for the follows. 
taking the mystery out of Kerbal Space Program here. We talked about the other engines, the solid fuel boosters. We talked about the fact that you can't throttle them. They're just go or no-go. Once you light them, you cannot do anything with them. Let's play with them now. I took off those. This rocket, not so good because it's not 1.7 on the pad. I could still get it into orbit using this from the payload. I could still get to orbit with this rocket, but it wouldn't be a very good rocket to take to space. Let's see if we can fix that. I need that to say 1.7. Let's get these little RT-10 solid boosters and toss them onto the side. That says 2.24. Alright, so see what happened. This is... God, this happens all the time and it's so frustrating. I put those onto the bottom there. Yellow Edge as well. Welcome to Kerbal. What am I doing tonight? Not Academy. That's during weeknights. Welcome to Kerbal Boot Camp. Going from zero to landing on the moon is what we're doing this evening. If you've never thought you could do that stuff, if you hang out with us... By the end of it, you'll have a really good shot at getting a moon landing. If not, uh, a moon impacting. <laughs> at the very least, a moon impacting. But we're going to get you there, starting off with I've never been to orbit before. The solid fuel, boost, solid fuel, fuel, <laughs> the solid fuel boosters, um, you can see that they landed down there. When I put them on there, it put them in a different stage. What's going to happen right now? If I click that, these boosters are going to go, but the center stage is not going to work. That's okay. Um, because that gives us 2.94 on the pad, huh? We could go to space just using this rocket, because look at this. 4,000 meters per second. This I don't like very much. Let me, let me illustrate. I, I'm going to illustrate what happens here. Look at the way this is staged, right? These solid fuel boosters on the side are going to go first. When they're done, we're going to light this booster in the middle. The problem is going to be that when we get there, we're going to only have 1.18. So watch what happens with this design. We can get it to space, but watch what happens. Solid food boosters. Dude, what's up, Gav? <laughs> so Hitman doing some needs more Separatrons. Dude, I didn't even put a... Uh, I didn't even put uh, separators on there. <laughs> A bit of a litho breaking, yeah. <laughs> Look, we were talking about the launch times. So we don't even need it with this as long as we launch fast enough. I am going to go ahead, throttle up, panel lock. Let's engage it. Let's hit the button. Those two solid fuel, boost fuel boosters are enough to take us off. That is interesting. But watch, all sorts of bad things are going to happen here. Things that just don't, they make me feel bad inside. Like I feel like a bad person. <laughs> I know better than designing rockets like this. But here we go. You can see these solid fuel boosters are pushing it. Throttle means nothing. I can't throttle up or down the solid fuel boosters. The problem is, when the boosters run out, and I hit the next stage, my speed is decreasing. That's because my thrust to weight is only 1.2. I went from a 2 point something thrust to weight all the way down to a 1.2 thrust to weight. My speed is decreasing. This is terrible. I don't want this. This is why I tell you the kicker stage or, you know, this wouldn't be the kicker stage, I guess, but the kicker stage or the lifter stage need at least 1.7 because it's making me fall backwards. Now, I've wasted all this fuel, right? I had this good velocity going from the uh, solid, fuel solid food boosters. <laughs> and then when they turned off, I activated this engine. My thrust weight went way down. And instead of up, I started to f not fall back, but I just started to accelerate less. I started to decelerate, but I was still going up. And it took burning out some of that fuel for me to get this so that my thrust to weight was higher. I also did another bad thing. These didn't get separated. What are we doing right now, right? We're carrying dead weight up. We don't like dead weight. These things are not doing anything for us. They're not payload. They're not providing thrust. They're not helping us control the craft. They're not giving us stability. They're not doing anything. They're just along for the ride. They're freaking leeches. They're moochers. We don't want them there. We can fix that. We'll go back to the VAB and fix it. But again, you see, now we're getting better and better thrust to weight. I need to be doing a gravity turn. Let's do that. I was talking too much about those terrible boosters that are hitching a free ride to orbit and not providing us with anything whatsoever. Totally annoying. But let us, uh, let us see here. Same exact launch profile. I turned over. Look how much worse this is, though. Right now, my app ops is only 18. When I was this far f full... This part of the rocket with those other three side boosters was able to get me almost into injection stage. But I keep burning. I just, I want to go to space. I just keep burning. We can get to space because our numbers were over 4,500 total, right? But I continue burning. This thing's going to run out well before we get an APO of 50. You know that's the next checkpoint, APO of 50. 
and just run out for me. I know what this looks like. I imagine that's going on in chat. <laughs> Didn't do it on purpose. Haven't you seen the Arion? <laughs> Let's see here. That falls off. Let's do the next stage. That's going to get us to 50 because look at that thrust weight. It's so much higher. It's going to push us up to 50. I'm going to do the same thing over and over again. When I get to 50, I'm going to turn and burn. When I turn and burn, I'm going to get orbital velocity. I want to start missing the planet. There we go. I want to miss the planet. This is going to go all the way up to 80. You've seen me do it before. You know that with this much delta V left, I can totally get this rocket into orbit. I'm not worried about that. That's 80. 818 in the tank. It's going to cost us about 1,000, maybe 800 to circularize. You know we can do it. I won't make you look. I won't make you look through it. In fact, let's go back to the vehicle assembly, and let's fix those solid fuel boosters. <laughs> let's see here, dude. Almost a 600. It's a Voyager. That's awesome. Brain fried. Almost to 600 followers. That's freaking cool. We should do some serious like follower hype with that. So, a couple things that went wrong here. What could I do? I could. Hmm, remember the thrust limiting? I could always come over here and I could limit the thrust on these guys until it was 1.7. So that's not bad. That means that we won't waste as much going up. Um, but we're still going to have to carry them. So let's go over here and get the radial decouplers. You've seen these radial decouplers before on rockets. You grab a radial decoupler. It attaches to the side of the craft like that. 19. It attaches to the side of the craft like that. We can put these solid fuel... fuel <laughs> solid fuel boosters. These SRBs, these solid rocket boosters on there. Um, now we're good to go. Look at what happens here. It changed our staging because these are things that we can stage. The solid fuel boosters are going to light. I've thrust limited them to 1.7. We need to go ahead and put this here with it. Now, this engine is still not powerful enough. Hmm, what could we do? It's not very... Bergsprecken! Bergsprecken, welcome to Kerbal Boot Camp. We are... Going from zero to space in a couple hours here at Kerbal Boot Camp. Um, thanks for the following. <laughs> I appreciate it. So now we've got these at 1.7. This is still too low, which I don't really like. Um, I don't really have a good way to get it higher. If you have the part, you could always come over here and put a different engine on it, right? So let me go over here. Let me grab this little part. We could put two engines on it. I don't want them that way. I want them that way. 2x symmetry, let's put two engines on it. That looks hideous, but that's 2.28. This rocket here is a lot better. I like this, and it would still get to space because that number right there is uh, that. It would need more fuel. What did I do last time? Light the central engine at launch and limit the thrust on the... Actually, that's a really good idea. That's an awesome idea, T-Game. Let me toss that. Let me do this. T-Game said we should light this engine at the same time and limit these some more. That is an excellent idea because what's going to happen? These will last for longer and will burn out some of the fuel here so we have a better thrust weight. Let's see if we can get that done. Let's see if we can get that done. I'm going to light the central engine at launch. I am going to thrust limit these things even more so that they go for longer. That right there is 1.7 on the pad. Actually, that was a freaking brilliant idea. T-Game... Brilliant idea, because look how that worked out for us, right? 1.7, assuming this engine's at full throttle, yeah, yeah. 1.7 on the pad, 1686. We ditched the solid boosters. See, this is our second stage. It's going to kick those solid boosters off the side. We'll have another 886 delta V left in the fuel for this engine, so it'll basically be flying without these things. 1.7, which is perfect, and the addition of the solid fuel boosters plus the rest of the fuel in that central stage, 2500. That's exactly right, T-Game. Dude, that was an absolutely perfect suggestion man that's so freaking cool because it worked out perfectly let's go fly this rocket and see see how it looks that was awesome dude i didn't think it would be that perfect either man that was freaking dude that was freaking awesome not gonna lie jeez oh pete let's go ahead and light this thing sas engage panel lock throttle all the way up because we didn't limit that engine Let's see how this pro flight profile is, and I'm going to show you another thing. Um, was it T-Game? Who said that it was the, uh, t -t 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 looking at the surface tab? I've got the surface tab here. The surface tab in Flight Engineer gives me one more bit of information that is useful for a launch. It's got the atmospheric efficiency right here. That basically means, am I hitting my checkpoints on the way up? 
Let's keep it as simple as that. If atmospheric efficiency is over 100, that means I'm pushing too hard against the atmosphere. I'm wasting speed, and the atmosphere is trying to slow me down. And if atmospheric efficiency is under 100, that means I could be going faster against the atmosphere. Because remember, it's all a balance. I want to get out of the gravity well as fast as I can, but I don't want to fight against the atmosphere too much while I'm doing it. That's where we get our checkpoints from. 500, 150, 1,000, 10,000. Sorry, 5,000, 150, 10,000, 260. Where we get those checkpoints from is the, the balance between gravity and getting the heck out of dodge versus drag and pushing against the air too hard. So let's see here. We're going to light this candle. 3, 2, 1, launch. And let's watch what's happening. This atmospheric efficiency, you'll see it should be right around 100 as long as at 5,000 meters we're going 150, 160. It should be right around 100. Let's see how it goes. You're piloting the rocket in spirit. Nice. Dude, yeah, there you go. You win a ride on the rocket. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Flynn, a very important thing about what you said. You can limit the thrust on the SRBs only in the VAB. You cannot do it once, you've, once you're in a flight scene, once you've launched the rocket. Um, you can only change that thrust limiter in the VAB. If they let you do it over here, you would basically have a throttle for, a throttle for the SRBs. Um, so you can limit them using the tweakable in the VAB only. I don't get the tweakable out here. First checkpoint, 5,000 meters. We want that to be about 100, and we want this to be about 150. So, there's 5,000, it was 170, so we were a little bit above it. We were accelerating a little bit too much there. Next checkpoint. I can't hear y'all say anything. <laughs> That's from my science stuff. It's like, <laughs> who can tell me why a bird makes a nest? And I wait for a response. <laughs> can't get a response here. Next checkpoint, 10,000. 260. We're going more than that, so we got 113 there. Ditch those! Whoa! That's that bug. That decoupler bug, y'all. <laughs> there is a bit of a bug in the game right now. Um, when you use those decouplers, <laughs> they cause all sorts of shenanigans with parts. You just saw what happened. <laughs> we ditched those parts, and they went freaking AWOL, spinning away. They're still down there somewhere. <laughs> that was awesome, though. K9 officer brings up an excellent point. Um, if you're fast on your feet, you can totally be limiting your engine using the throttle right here instead of using the thrust limiter. Um, you can't do it with the SRBs, right, because you can only set that in the VAB. But on a liquid fuel engine, I can actually feather my throttle. I can give it less or more throttle to change that thrust to weight, right? What was that? 379. Let's ditch it. Now we're into our kicker stage. When that gets to 50, I'm going to turn and burn. You know the drill. You know the drill. That's why I'm going it over going over it again and again and again. When that gets to 50, orbital mode, turn and burn. Turn and burn till you get to 80. Give yourself plenty of wiggle room. Um, I could do that. In order to do that, you have to be kind of fast on your feet. You have to be thinking. You have to be watching engineer. You're like, oh, I need less throttle. I need to throttle down to 1.7, that sort of stuff. Um, but it is, oops. It is totally possible to not use the thrust limiter in the VAB on the liquid fuel engines to actually use it in the game. Um, if you can think on your feet, this will actually tell me. You can see there's two numbers. Let's go with that. Oh, by the way, once I'm up here in space, you can see that atmospheric efficiency is way low. I could be going insanely fast right now, and it still wouldn't be too fast because there's barely any atmosphere. You can see the atmosphere gauge there. Um, you can actually see. Let me cut the engine. Actually, deactivate the engine. There we go. Nope, it'll only do it with an active engine. But what uh, K9 was saying, I'm just going to fly around here. By giving it more throttle, Engineer will actually say your max theoretical thrust weight right now at full throttle is 5 point whatever. But if I give it less throttle, like there's 50%, 2.7 is half of 5.4, right? Not really. Pretty close, pretty close. Um, but I can say by giving it 50% throttle, I'm at 2 point, basically 3.0 now. If I give it even less... That's 0.89. You can change your craft's thrust to weight by using the throttle. Just see that thing go up and down, right? Um, that is totally the way to do it, but you have to kind of think on the fly. You have to be watching that number, yada, yada. I could do the same thing on the pad. I could launch at 75% throttle. I would much rather launch at 100% throttle and thrust limit down to 1.7 because um, that makes the launch so much easier. Let's go back to the VAB. That T game was an awesome idea. <laughs> Scraggles McCoon, I'm, th I'm sorry if it pisses you off. Um, flight Engineer should be in the stock game. Um, 
the game is so much easier to understand, to comprehend what's going on by seeing the numbers in Flight Engineer. It gives you visual feedback as you add parts, as you change things, the throttle, all that sort of stuff. I don't do mech jab because I like seeing the information, but I actually like flying the missions myself. Um, but there are lots of mods. There's what? There's Void, there's Engineer, there's MechJeb that'll give you information like this. Um, but I really think that at least some of this should be in the stock game because it makes sense. It makes it so much obvious, more obvious when you're adding or subtracting parts, moving parts around, that sort of stuff. It makes it obvious the effect as opposed to just like unlimited guest test and revise and you don't really understand what's happening. Um, those things should be in the stock game. I'm not going to lie. This rocket here actually turned out really well. Especially after uh, T-Game there said that we should change it. Let's see here. What else did we do? Atmospheric efficiency. Yeah, Thetor, um, we could do something. Let's let's go over that, man. Since you wanted to talk about it, let's go over it. It's only 8 o'clock. We've got plenty of time to get to the moon here at Kerbal Boot Camp. Let's, uh, let's go with the atmospheric efficiency. <laughs> you did. A, I, I had an Excel spreadsheet, man. I used to have an Excel spreadsheet that I would calculate delta v with. And uh, while it's one thing, I think that having it here in the engineer is a lot better for streaming than me flitting over to an Excel spreadsheet with a rocket equation in it so that I can calculate delta v. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. Yes. What was that? Nice hit, man. That's actually a pretty cool space station. It looks. It's round. Where'd you Where'd you get that from? That's pretty cool, dude. Thanks for sharing. Um, I am. I want to show one more thing here. This rocket turned out well. Let's show what happens when we have insanely ridiculous thrust to weight. So I'm going to do that number. <laughs> this will be fun. And I'm going to do this number. And I'm going to I'm going to hit the concept of atmospheric efficiency right quick, right? Let's toss an engineer pod on there just so we can see what's going on. Engineer pod. There you go. By the way, Engineer 1.0, another shout out to Cybertech. Um, Engineer 1.0, you actually don't have to put the parts on there. It makes it a little bit more stock-like, and it doesn't make your craft break. So I put the parts on there because I'm using Kerbal Engineer 0.6, and there is a new version, 1.0, Cybertech has released that doesn't do that. Let's toss a mainsail on the bottom of this puppy. <laughs> I could almost get this to orbit. <laughs> That's awesome. Who knew? Jeez, what if I just put this here? Tick, 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 4.5 of the past, 38, 78, I probably won't quite get this to orbit, but let's see how this rocket does, right, 4.5 on the pad, that's a lot more thrust to weight than we need, I could fix it by thrust limiting my mainsail to 1.7, like that, that would fix it, but I want to demonstrate atmospheric efficiency, let's light this candle, Very, but it sure is pretty. <laughs> nice. Mainsail! Mainsail pride! <laughs> Everybody give the mainsail a shout out. Kerbal boot camp, two hours in, and you get to build something with a mainsail. That's how we roll. We should do it right away. Um, I'm going to throttle this thing all the way up. Let's also activate our atmospheric efficiency. Watch what happens. Because, right? Remember, I said if this number is really close to 4,000. If I fly right, I should be able to get this rocket to orbit. Ain't going to happen with this. Let's do it to it. Launch. That is a very fast takeoff. Look at this atmospheric efficiency. Already over 100. <laughs> that mainsail is just a lot more thrust than we need for this single pod payload. We're going straight up. <laughs> Our first checkpoint, 5,000 meters at 150 meters per second. <laughs> we are, geez, 205. <laughs> We're going way too fast. 5,000 going 350, that's way too high. Second checkpoint, 10,000 meters going 260. We're going to blow through that gate. Look, we're starting to get sonic boom shock effects up here. 10,000 going 600. Let's turn and do our gravity burn. Now we're actually getting sh atmospheric shock heating. <laughs> we're at 185, but look, the higher we get out of the atmosphere, the less that that matters. We're slowing down some, but we are unfortunately... Not whoa, 102. <laughs> Didn't even do the turn and burn. I totally forgot. It was going so fast I couldn't even fly that rocket. But <laughs> we did get a 252 apoaps. If you need to get into space, you can do this. It's definitely suborbital. That's what it's going to look like. We'd have time to do science up there or whatever we wanted to do. Um, but that's what it looks like when you've got a lot more thrust to weight than you need. 
Let's see if we can go over feathering it with the throttle right quick. Ah, uh, no, dingbat, it should be 150 meters per second, 150 to 160 um, going that fast. Let me see if I can get it done with the mainsail, right? So that was a really bad launch because I was going way too fast. I was just busting through those atmospheric efficiency tapes. I was destroying my freaking checkpoints, 5,150, 10,260. Let me see, because remember what I could do, right? I can feather it using the throttle. So I want to be 1.7 on the pad. Let me, l well, that's going to be 4.5, 1.7. That's less than half. Let's put it down here and launch it. So I want this number right here, my throttle thrust to weight, to be 1.7. That's 1.08. Throttle it up a little bit. 1.7. 1.5. There we go. This rocket right here, let's watch our checkpoints this time. I used the throttle so that my throttle thrust to weight was 1.7. And let's see here. I don't know if I'll be able to make an orbit, but we'll watch that atmospheric efficiency. Again, first checkpoint, 5,000 meters, 150 meters per second. <laughs> you just plan for an explosion every time. You're right, Dingbat, you are correct. I'm not I'm I'm illustrating the points here. Um I'm not trying to fix it yet. I'm illustrating the points and the different ways that we can fix it. Because the number one way with science in general really is understanding the underlying concepts and then using your understanding it to fix problems as you come across with it. First checkpoint, 50, 150, 160, that was good, and look at that, we're under 97, or actually we're under 100%. Second checkpoint, I think it's actually 160. I say 1500, 150 because it's easy to remember, but it's really 1500, 160 meters per second. Look at that, we're staying right there on that atmospheric efficiency. That's what 1.7 on the launch pad does for us, exactly 100%. Next checkpoint, 10,000 meters, going 260, a little bit low again, that's okay. Let's turn. I'm going to try and do a nice gravity burn. I don't want to get a lot of steering loss there. Look at that wiggle waggle. Come on, mainsail. Pull us over, buddy. It's going to be close. It is definitely going to be close. Dude, Dingbat, 1967, welcome to Kerbal Boot Camp. Zero to space in a couple hours <laughs> is what we're doing. I totally appreciate the follow, though. I appreciate all support for my channel. I love doing this. I have so much fun doing it. And I love uh, helping other people play the game because it's such a cool game. It's definitely worth the 26 bucks. I'm not going to lie. Remember our next checkpoint, Apoaps of 50. Apoaps of 50. Turn and burn. Click on that to go to orbital mode and start tossing all of our velocity into, or all of our delta V into orbital velocity. There's 6.4. Wow, it's going to be so close. It's going to be so close because I can do it on the fly. I can add this number to that number. If it's 2,300, let's stop right there. If that number plus that number is 2,300, then I can make an orbit. And we're losing some to atmospheric efficiency right there. Oh my gosh, that's almost where we cr crossed over. If I had, s I could have gone into orbit at 75, I think. I totally, I totally could have done that. Um, yes, if you start Flynn, the uh, or Flix, the rule of thumb is that if you start on the launch pad with 1.7, oh, that's going to be so close. If you start on the launch pad, <laughs> 1.7 thrust to weight. Um, <laughs> I got it. Um, if you start the launch pad with 1.7, the way that most of the engines burn the fuel, the rate that they burn it, you will just about always hit those checkpoints right. Um, that is how it goes. That's why they're such easy numbers to remember. You just don't have to worry about it. And starting with 1.7 on the pad almost always does that for you. Let's see how close to an orbit we can get. Remember, wait for the periaps. There's the periaps. Get the apoaps back over here. Yep, wrong way. Get the apoaps right on that. There we go, in the node, and then burn until they flip. Wait for that apoaps to switch. There we go. 86 by 82. That's not quite enough. 82 by 82. That's good. Ah, oh, see, 1186, and we, need, we only have 964, so she will not go to space. I bet you I could have done it if I had the apo at 70. If I did it right at 70, we could have just barely gotten to space with this freaking four-part rocket. <laughs> Couldn't have come back down from space. Could have got into space, though. I mean, technically, I'm in space right now. <laughs> Let's go ahead and revert the flight. Let's see here. What else did I miss? Da -da 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 -da. Did I miss anything else? Did I miss anything? Are there any other... I mean, uh, what was that? Dingbat said that it would be better 
Not only would we get more delta V, but we wouldn't have to thrust limited much if we used the skipper. The mainsail has 1500 thrust for 6.0 tons of mass. The skipper is half the mass with half the thrust, basically. We don't need that much thrust. That right there would definitely go to space. With the skipper on it, this rocket would be very easy to go to space. In fact, if I thrust limited it down to 1.7... Actually, I won't do that. I could just do it on the pad. We all know that this rocket right here will go to space. I'm going to do the launch one more time. I'm trying to drill these concepts into your head, these numbers into your head. We're going to do this one more time. Yeah, Dingbat, you're right. I totally got it. I, I could have got it if I was right there at 70. This one with 4740 on the pad, this one will definitely go to space. I think right about there is going to be 1.7. I just throttled it up and down. I'm going to pan a lock, SAS engage, engineer is good to go. Let's launch. 1.63, that was pretty darn close. Let's go with 1.65, there we go. This rocket is definitely going to go to space. Dude, what's up? GTO Irish, welcome to Kerbal Boot Camp. Um, if you've never played Kerbal Space Program before, we are trying to demystify it. We're trying to explain some of the basic concepts. Um, we're talking about how to get our first rocket into space here. And uh, very shortly here, in just a couple minutes, we are going to actually put something on this rocket that's going to go around the moon. In fact, we'll go back to our other rocket and we'll take it to the moon. Because our next topic I'm going to talk about is the lunar trajectory, the lunar transfer. First checkpoint member, 5,000 meters. Hammer, hammer, hammer. 150, 160 meters per second. Atmospheric efficiency. Atmospheric efficiency. <laughs> that thing right there is looking good. We don't want it to be over 100. There is 5,000, 160, 96. I like it. Could go a little bit faster. That's okay. Next thing. Yeah, we are <laughs> trial and error. That is definitely right. <laughs> Next checkpoint, 10,000 meters, 260, 100% right there. Look at that. It's almost exactly right, and all we did was throttle it to 1.7 on the pad. It's so easy. 10,000 meters, start our gravity turn. Just lean it over on the side. Just lean it over. Press in D, lean into the east. Moon's not always going to be there, but we're going to the east because it's like jumping off a moving sidewalk. If I jump with the moving sidewalk, I will jump further. If I jump against the moving sidewalk, I will not go as far. Same thing with Kerbin. Kerbin is a big moving sidewalk. It's rotating in a direction. We want to jump with the rotation. That's why we turn east and not west. Next checkpoint, 5,000 meter apoaps on the engineer here. Irish, I'm not looking at the chat. I'm trying to fly a rocket, but I totally recommend you scroll down and look at my mod list. You need to get Kerbal Engineer at the very least. It makes the game so much easier to learn. 50,000 apoaps, turn and burn. Go orbital mode and start to toss that delta V into orbital velocity. I highly, highly, highly recommend Kerbal Engineer as the number one must-have mod. There are a couple, oh, 75. There are, there are a couple other mods like it. But something that gives you all of this visual feedback as to what's going on, it makes the game so much easier. I've got a lot more numbers than you need up there. You don't need that many numbers. But let's go for the circularization here. Precise node, thanks. Put on the Apo apps. Pull on the green thing until... I get a periaps. Whoop! There's a periaps. Let's make the periaps 75. Wait till they start to move real fast. That's 759 by 762. Good enough. Let's go do here. We can say we will all be able to know whether or not this is going to work just looking at the engineer. I've got 1999. Damn, got a used car rocket going. I only need 1088 to do this burn. Engineer's telling me I've got 19999999999 there. And so I know that I will have about 900 meters per second left after I complete this burn. Again, doing my burn, point towards this. We want to bracket our burn. We always bracket our burn. Half the burn before the node, half the burn after the node. Kerbal Space Program's telling us this burn is going to be 20 seconds long, and I want to start 10 seconds before the burn, before the node, actually. So when this says T minus 10 seconds, I want to burn it. It will burn until T plus 10 seconds because it's 20 second total burn. 10 seconds, <laughs> 0 seconds, 10 more seconds, <laughs> and then the burn's complete. We could actually do a lunar flyby with a free return trajectory with this craft. So let's do it. Let's move on. When that reads 10 seconds, I'm going to do that burn. That's all it is. That's all it is. Surface, we don't need you anymore. Make it less intimidating. T minus 10 seconds. We spool up. We go. There we go. 
Let's do a burn. And you'll see that we are about halfway through our burn when we hit 10 minus 0 right there. Now we're continuing to go down. And when I get to the bottom of that burn, I press X to cut my engine. So, X. Yeah, we'll finish it off just a little bit. Almost. Not the perfect burn. I don't, not, there we go. Good. 76 by 73. Good enough for me. 900 in the tank. That's about what we said we were going to have left, right? Uh, it can totally go to the moon. Yes. T-game, dude. Oh my gosh, yeah, you can totally use it here. Um, everything under the must-have info mod, I totally think that... Brain fried dude, cut it out. Everybody knows you're my brother. <laughs> you don't have to do the nut hanging, dude. Like, seriously. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate it, but everybody knows that you're my, my brother, dude. You don't have to do that. <laughs> Freaking goof bucket. <laughs> All right, um... Yeah, no, T-Game, I've got the Trajectories mod also listed under my uh, must-have info mods. So, I've only, Corn Chips, I've only been streaming a month. <laughs> I've been <laughs> playing Kerbal Space Program a whole heck of a lot. <laughs> More than a month. Let's do a Mooner Trajectory! Ding, 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 play, play attention here. Um, I am going to get us to the moon using this craft, y'all. I'm not going to land on the moon, we're going to get a Mooner... Impact. A Mooner Impact. <laughs> nice. Wait, what did you miss? Did you forget something? Scraggles. Yeah. Dude, T-Game has an excellent point. I, I totally agree with T-Game there. Dude, GTO Irish, welcome to Kerbal Boot Camp, man. Hopefully you just got the game in. Hopefully you're on the moon by the end of the broadcast. You, you see what's going on. I do. No, we do because a free return costs 860 and we've got 916 in the tank, Cyber. We are good to go. I'm actually going to change the channel title because we're going to move into the portion of the boot camp where we start to talk about getting to the moon. No, where is my T Street uh, T board? Okay, Kerbal Boot Camp, Mooner missions. That just went through twice. Oh, I saw it. GTO. I <laughs> nice, dude. Again, thanks GTO. Get the get the other Irish or whatever that stands for. <laughs> Kerbal Boot Camp making it to the move. Save that stream title. There we are. Let us. Green screen. That's okay. Just change the stream title, y'all. Let's go to the moon. This craft is missing some important components, but it can still give Jeb a flyby of the moon. Um, I will get shot up with the uh, chat. So many burned it. No, dude, Gav. <laughs> uh, yes, Flix. Flix, you can. This will be on my channel um, tomorrow if you go and look at me. You can definitely, you click on my name up where it says Das Valdez currently playing Kerbal Space Program. Click on my name. It says past broadcast. You click on that, you can see my past broadcast. This will be there tomorrow. So, the moon. Where is the moon? Step one of going to the moon. Locate the moon. Scroll wheel scrolls me out. Hopefully you know that. It's not that sort of boot camp. It's not elementary school. Find the moon. There's the moon. Click on the moon. <laughs> Let's do this. Step one, find the moon. Step two, click on the moon. Click set as target. Step three, rotate your view around. This is so easy. Rotate your view around until the moon is to the right of Kerbin, right on the horizon. That's all you have to do. I've got, see, see what I'm talking about there, right? I've got the moon right there. It's right on the horizon. Just do that. Just trust me. Trust me. The moon is right freaking there. And I am going to tilt it up just a little bit. Again, the moon's right there. Tilt it up just a little bit and click right here on your orbit. Not on this side, but on this side of your orbit. Just click right there. Give it a little click. You click that. The trick is that I can see the moon of the node. You see how that works? I could actually, I could have a little bit more out. You can see the moon through the node. That is what we're trying to do. The moon is right on the horizon. The node is right there. Remember, it's on the close side. It's not on this side over here. After you do that, you put the moon in the freaking crosshairs like that. The only thing you have to do to encounter the moon is to grab the prograde pro handle here and pull it until this says 860 meters per second. Watch. You think I'm lying? When that number right there says 860, we are going to have an encounter for the moon. 850, actually. Bing! File's done. <laughs> 867. Let's just go ahead and put it down at 860. 
That right there, folks, 860 is a Mooner flyby. That's not a great one. We're way out there. We must be a little inclined or something. But all I did, moon on the horizon, set his target, put the node right there. Put the moon in the middle of the node just like that and drag that green thing until it says 860. Kerbal Space Program is not witch science. <laughs> witch science. Oh, my gosh. It's rocket science, but it's simple concepts. So we're not doing any equations, all right? There are equations involved with this. I'm just teaching you the shortcut to get that moon encounter. Let's do this. Let's pull back some, and let's see what happens with less delta V. So I'm going to pull back. There is a Mooner slingshot maneuver that's going to throw us out almost into a minimus orbit. In fact, <laughs> let's see here. Wouldn't that be awesome? A Mooner slingshot to minimus transfer all in one thing with this craft. Nope, not going to happen. Let us, here's what we want. We want to put it at about 850. Let's see what we got. Yes. And you see what's happening, right? The closer, you see my Mooner periaps? That Mooner periaps is 784 right now, 7,800 or 784,000. The more delta V I give it, the closer I get to the moon, and the more I slingshot past the moon, it kind of throws me out there, right? So if I get really close to the moon, I may be able to get a curb and escape trajectory before I hit. Yes. Right there, I could actually, using 855 meters per second, slingshot past the moon and get a curb and escape trajectory. That's not what we're looking for. We are actually looking for less delta V. We want a Mooner flyby. And see how as I give it less delta V down to 850, this number is going down. This is my Kerbin periapse. What I want is to bring that periapse down such that it touches Kerbin. Oops, I just missed the moon. There we go. Such that it touches Kerbin. See that periapse at 19,699? That is awesome. So what is going to happen when I do this burn? We are going to execute the burn. 845 meters per second on the burn. 913 in the tank. We're good to go. We're, we're only going to have what? We're only going to have 55 plus 13. We're only going to have 68 left. But we're going to go out here. We're going to fly by the moon. Following this, we're going to go out there. Then we're going to pass the moon like this. Why is it like that? You might say that's because the moon is actually going to be over here. But relative to the moon, we're going to go like that. Change the conics mode. We won't talk about that. We're going to fly by the moon like this. And then we're going to escape from the moon and come, will it actually show me? Yeah, right there where the gray thing is over there. We're going to escape from the moon, and we're going to fall back to Kerbin like that and land. Or actually, we're going to enter the Kerbin atmosphere. Where is it? Where's my periaps? At 20,000 meters. That will be enough for us to land. Let's do this and show how easy this is. So what I'm going to need to do is 12 seconds in 19 minutes. That is going to be a six second burn we always have our burns and let me talk some while we fast forward about why we have the burns let me get right on target there there we go now we're gonna go ahead and fast forward while I talk about that can I explain it in the time this goes the node right here 845 meters per second it assumes that you are going to apply all of that all 845 meters per second of Delta V right there on that node exactly at the time that the node occurs unfortunately we can't do that we can't dump 845 seconds or 845 meters per second of delta V out in a split second. Our engine can only use the delta V so fast, and that is going to make us not be able to do it right then. Now, that wasn't a very good explanation, was it? If I start the burn at the node, that means that we'll burn at the node and we'll go for 12 seconds past the node. That's not good because that is going to put a lot of the burn on the back side of the node, which won't be accurate. If I started at T plus 12 seconds, sorry, T minus 12 seconds, and we did the entire burn before the node, I think I said that backwards. Um, if I start at T minus 12 seconds, and we burn for 12 seconds, and by the time we get to the node, we are done with the burn, that's not accurate either. Will it really make a huge difference? Not for these. It's really more when you get into interplanetary transfers and burns that take you two minutes to do and that sort of stuff. But I always split the node. It's a good thing to get. I call it splitting the node. Um, I always split the node. What I want is for six meters per, or six seconds of this burn to be before the node and six seconds of this burn to be after the node. And when I do that, that is the best way to average trying to get all of that meters per second directly on the node. It's just the most efficient way to do the burn. It becomes difficult to do when you are, say, what do I have? Two minutes left? I better shut up. It becomes difficult to do when you have like a 10-minute burn. If you follow my interplanetary uh, sessions, that sort of stuff, 
you will see why. But uh, for this burn, I always, always, always just about split that node in half, split that burn in half, half the burn before the node and half the burn after the node. We all know what the rocket looks like, so I'm actually going to execute this burn from right here at T minus 6 seconds. Always, always, always just divide the total burn. There we go, and I'm back. <laughs> them wireless headsets, right? I need to plug those in. I didn't plug them in. That's okay. Yeah, my hearing aid went out. I totally paused the game, too. So I was saying, 12 seconds to go. We want to do half of that. T minus 6 seconds. Let's get back over there. <laughs> that, when that says T minus 6, I'm going to light this engine. There we go. Half the burn on one side, half the burn on the other side. Look at what's happening. We're just increasing, 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 increasing. Right there on that burn. And this, I actually want to burn a little bit slower. Because I don't want to waste my delta V. I don't have that much wiggle room here. There we go. Do we have a free return trajectory? Currently our periapse is 40. That's not really enough. I burned a little bit too much. So I've got to put just a little teeny tiny bit going back in the opposite direction. Or else we won't particularly get captured. So, we can get rid of that node. And watch. All I'm going to do, I'm going to tweak this. I'm going to watch that periapse right there. By the way, you can click on it, and it'll stick. Normally, it only shows up when you highlight over it, but you click on the node, and it'll actually stick. I'm just going to give myself a little bit here, trying to decrease this periapse just a little tiny bit. Wow. There we go. That will definitely get us back to Kerbin. So, see what we have, right? We have an orbit. We're going to be following the blue line, going out along the blue line. There's where we're going to hit the moon. We're going to pass the moon, not particularly too close to the moon, but we're going to pass the moon like that. We're going to escape the moon, and we're going to fall back down the other side of this orbit, coming back to Kerbin. Not the lowest pass in the world, but let's go see how it works. While I'm time warping, I will check the chat. <laughs> let's see what we else. Dude, you know something? <laughs> Brain Fried, if you want to order me a pizza and have it shipped to me, that would be fine. <laughs> I would be totally cool with that. Let's see here. My hearing aid is gone. Let me see if I missed anything. Can you explain this 0.5 meters per second orbiting the moon? What do you mean? 0.5 meters per second orbiting the moon? Oh, were they coming into the moon at such a thing that their capture burn was 0.5 meters per second? Is that what I'm looking at? Probably. It's just they came into the moon sphere of influence so far out on the edge that they only needed 0.5 minute meters per second for a, for a capture burn. That's what was going on there. That's cool. <laughs> uh, that's what I would, I would guess. I mean, without being able to scroll around, it's hard to see. Let's see there. Did I miss anything else yet? Quick saving. Gravity boost. Yep, we talked about that. Q Squad's next hips, Kerbal Med School. <laughs> What's up, XTC Crispy? <laughs> you managed it, dude, Master of Aardvarks, that's cool, welcome. Flix had to take off, that's why I was asking about that. I'm totally getting caught up with the chat here. Oh my gosh, I'm reading the wrong chat again, I always do that. <laughs> Let's see here, we are going to the moon, are we going to the moon? Are we at the moon yet? Nope, we're coming up. We're going along, where is this? Here we go. Yeah, okay, I explained that for y'all. There's that. Wow, there's so much in chat. There's so many freaking people watching. Um, hard to believe we've only been doing this a month. Okay, I, I've, we've got that. Again, Kerbal Boot Camp, I'm here to answer questions. I'm here to give y'all information, so I'm checking the chat right now while we're doing the Mooner, the Mooner Go there. God bless Simulate and Background. <laughs> so, calculate stuff immediately at the note. Okay, we got that. Missed the efficiency window. Yep, you got that. Adding more rockets, nice. <laughs> Get Jeb out and push. No, we're fine. 
GTO initials fighting Irish. All right, cool, cool, cool. Flex, brain surgery, med school. Give me a follow on Twitter. We skipped the moon and went to Minmus and said we could do that next time. Makes me feel awesome. How we doing? All right. Again, I'm just reading the chat. I'm going to drink some Dr. Pepper, too. Delicious Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Scraggles McCoon, man. Nice. I got Yaz. Scraggles McCoon was talking about the Dr. Pepper. Did he finally get the skin? I do. Yes, I'll show it again. He finished a 37-minute burn. That's ridiculous. There's my hearing aid going. Ion engine. RIP batteries. Put some solars. Put some solar. <laughs> I need RTGs sticking out the side of my headphone. <laughs> are we at the moon yet? Almost at the moon. Long burn. Cybertech, you are so pedantic, but you are also correct. <laughs> you usually don't have to worry about that. Sithily, I do about one Dr. Pepper every two hours, but these are Dr. Peppers for ants. The only seven ounce Dr. Peppers. And usually I don't even drink this whole seven ounce. It's really just something to, to drink. It's not a... I try not to fill up on it. Apollo 9 in this ship. <laughs> Pizza place. Great guess. I got the Dr. Paper. Dude, Steel Mage. Thanks for the follow. You're always a regular here. I totally appreciate you being here supporting the channel in every single way. So, go to <laughs> GTO. I don't work for NASA. Um, I am just a fan. I originally thought I was going to be an aerospace engineer. Um, then the dot-com boom happened back in the year 1998, 1999, 2000, and I got into computers. And when I got into computers, I never really went back to it. But I've always had a love of space and aircraft and things that are cool and things that explode and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I just, I love it. And this is such a great game to play. Where's the moon? There's the moon. Wow, we're actually getting a lot closer to the moon. Let us go ahead and warp on up to the moon. We're going to do a nice flyby of the moon. Hello, moon. What's going on? Four parts on this ship. <laughs> Missing a parachute, really. Here's our Mooner flyby. Say hi to the moon. We're now in the moon's sphere of influence. If I had enough delta V, I could circularize around the moon, right? If I did this, and I burned retrograde... Oh, I could actually hit the moon. Let's see what this is, what it is for a circularization. There we go. So I could actually circularize around the moon if I had a buck 71 in the tank. I don't. I only have 67. But we have the free return trajectory. So we're going to nuke that node. We're basically just doing a flyby of the moon. However, if you're in science or career mode, doing a flyby of the moon like this very early on can get you some cool science. Um, you could come out here and you could run some science experiments. You could do an EVA report. I think EVA here would be high above the moon, right? EVA report high above the moon, right? Space high above the moon. This would get you, I think it's like 32 science or something you'd get from that. Um, you could go inside the craft. You could do a crew report from inside the craft. Where are you at? A crew report is going to be crew report high above the moon. You would get some science from that. Um, early on, you could do a moon or flyby like this. You could also complete some missions, I think, doing this. But all we're doing is a moon or flyby. Let's get it over with. You get what's going on. We're passing the moon. Let's go faster. We've been to the moon. We're going to get a whole lot more up close and personal to the moon than this. There's our periapse. That's where we would burn if we wanted to circularize. Check out what's happening, right? Do you, do you understand what's going on here? This is the orbit we're in right now, the blue orbit. The brown orbit, yellow orbit, is the next orbit that we're going to have. The moon is not going to catch us. We didn't go close enough. We are going to go out here. We're going to exit this. When we exit it, check out the information I can get. I can highlight over the node, and it'll show me two things. It'll show me the position of the moon. I can't make it stick. You see the position of the moon right here. I highlight over that, and it shows me where the moon's going to be when I escape it. It's also going to show me in the next orbit where I'm going to come into the next orbit. So I'm going to escape the moon there, fall into this orbit right around here. The moon's going to be right about there then. And as it falls, I'm going to fall in this orbit the rest of the way down to Kerbin. One more very important thing that I want to talk about, electric charge. On this craft, I don't have any means of generating electric charge. If this was a probe, this craft would be toast because I have no batteries, I have no power generation, I have no solar cells. The only thing I can do to generate electric charge is to use the alternator on the engine, which means using engine, changing my orbit to generate power. No bueno. We don't like that. So... If it was a probe, it would not be happy right now. It would be out of electric charge. We could not control it anymore. However, because it's a manned pod, manned pods, for some reason, don't use electric charge. Um, and we will be able to retain control of it as we go back to the planet. Um, 
But electric charge, when we do our actual moon mission, we are going to do that. Let's go ahead and finish up with the bypass of the moon here and show you what the free return looks like. Again, the moon is moving up to where it is. We're moving closer to that. I mean, look at how everything goes. Together. I love it. I love it when a plan comes together. Um, look at how all of this is coming up here. We're going to change sphere of influence. The moon is going to be over there. We're going to be right there in that orbit. Leaving the moon. Goodbye, moon. Thoop. Pay no attention to that. It takes it a second to, to update. And now we have our return trajectory coming on here. We are going to intersect because we can't go 5,000 into the atmosphere. Let's get this over with. Whoa! <laughs> Did anybody just see what happened? <laughs> so if you time warp, normally the atmosphere will slow you down. However, in order to slow you down, it requires physics. When you time warp, in normal time warp mode, it ignores physics. It turns physics simulation off. <laughs> and I was able to time warp so fast. It actually bypassed Kerbin the first time. I skipped through Kerbin completely, and it did not slow me down. <laughs> so I totally did not get a... <laughs> I totally did not get the initial encounter. Anyways, <laughs> let's see here. Now that we are not skipping through Kerbin, <laughs> we are under. Yeah, we've started our reentry. <laughs> let's go watch the craft. I don't know if Jeb is going to live, y'all. I'm going to do a lot of different tricks and hope that Jeb lives. Um, we're going to try for an ablative landing here. We really need a stack decoupler here, right? Actually, y'all tell me what I need. Because I I didn't intend for this one. I was just proving this could go into orbit. I didn't intend for the Mooner mission. We've got the Mooner mission. There's our shock heating. We've got Jeb in a pod. Somebody throw out ways that we can modify this craft to save Jeb. So that he can actually come home. <laughs> Look at that. What mods am I using? Crunch. <laughs> Scroll down, man. I've got the links to all the mods that I use in the channel. Toby626, dude, welcome to Kerbal Boot Camp. We're going from I've never played Kerbal Space Program before to a Mooner landing in a couple hours during boot camp this evening. And that's totally the thing. The game is kind of intis intimidating. It's like the equations behind the scenes are rocket science. There's just a look at all these freaking numbers. Oh my gosh, this game, there's no headshots involved at all. Um, but... It's so much fun to play. The concepts are pretty simple, and once you get the basic concepts, there's a lot you can do. It's Legos with physics on the computer and spaceships. Like, how? I don't even know. I mean, how can you go wrong? <laughs> Let's see here. You need more ion engines. If Jeb jumps out and holds his spacesuit just right, it's a parachute, like pff, paragliding sort of thing. <laughs> the part I need to add is an ambulance. T-game actually... <laughs> <laughs> giving me the right stuff right here. A decoupler and parachutes. That's the correct answer. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's see here. More ion engines. We could do that. Tell Jeb to jump. I think I'm going to do that, McCoon. Possibly a boat. <laughs> wait, I'm not still a... Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'm not. Suicide burn. You'll only impact at 3040. <laughs> That's what I'm going to go for. I'm going to go for a suicide burn here, y'all. I'm going to fall straight down... I've only got 0.7 seconds in the tank, so basically when I'm crossing 100 meters up, I'm going to light this engine and the entire craft is going to fall apart. <laughs> this should be interesting, but I think Jeb can live, because the impact resistance on this pod, oh, we'll see. Oh, 61. We're not quite at terminal velocity yet. Come on, air. Slow me down more than that. I need you to slow me down more than that. Also going to get ready for the EVA. Six, five, four, three to burn EVA jump jab no <laughs> I needed floor it I needed to be able to spool the engine all the way up at the last second <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> we hit going too fast we needed like if we had a buck 50 delta V we totally could have done it but 60 was not quite enough <laughs> he's like I'm out of here I'm getting out of here. Let me check the chat. <laughs> Prepare for hydro break. Wait until 120 minutes. I don't think I could have spinned it up that fast. 
hydro breaking. <laughs> the Dos Valdez hydro breaking challenge. Let us go for a mooner flyby here. What's up, Happy Killer? <laughs> it's not bad for a four by a little bit more. Let's do this for real, y'all. This rocket here did a mooner pass. If I had a shoot and a decoupler, I mean, look. With these two changes, you could do a lunar flyby. One change. And a shoot to save Jeb. Two change, you could totally save Jeb's life. You could put one solar panel on it for power generation. That was good to go, though. <laughs> Between a boot camp and a Kerbal Space Academy. Logan, um... My thing for boot camp was I'm going to do an extended stream. In boot camp, I'm going to start at zero and go all the way to a lunar landing. The Kerbal Space Academy are two-hour sessions that I do every weeknight, 8 p.m. Eastern to 10 p.m. Eastern. And I am looking at doing them earlier in the day as well so Europe can catch me. Um, but, the, yeah, I am. You can see. Look. <laughs> as, a ti as a scientist, you can uh, calculate how much Dr. Pepper is left in the can by the angle At which I have to tilt it <laughs> to do that. But yeah, Kerbal Boot Camp, longer, six-hour stream, maybe longer than that, starting from zero, going all the way to the moon. Kerbal Space Academy, more advanced topics, weeknights, that sort of stuff. So, with these two things, Jeb could have returned safely. Those two changes, I mean, we could have done a circularization burn if we ended one more freaking fuel tank to it. If we did that right there... We could have got a lot closer past to the moon. And it's... I mean, honestly, this was an SSTM. A single stage to the moon, and we came back. <laughs> Let's build an actual moon rocket here, though. The last sip did not include a free moon return. <laughs> Nearly empty. <laughs> Dude, this is so much fun. You guys are awesome. I'm not gonna lie. Holy... We've got 84 people watching me do this? Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't checked it in forever. You have to be kidding me. <laughs> Dude, everybody that's here. Kerbal Boot Camp. Cosmic Cow. Welcome to Kerbal Boot Camp. Kerbal Boot Camp, we're going from zero to the moon in an extended stream. I also do Kerbal Space Academies every weeknight, covering advanced topics. Space planes, interplanetary transfers, building space stations, advanced landers, farming science, all different topics. So definitely, if you want to, give me a follow here on Twitter or whatever. Um... Let's build a Mooner craft that is just a Mooner flyby craft, and I am also going to build a Mooner landing craft. So, that's good. That's good. Let us build the payload. And I think I'm going to put a little bit more fuel in it. Like that. Remember, payload is going to be the Mooner craft. A Delta D. No, my initials, dude. Brain fried, my initials. Das Valdez, Delta V. <laughs> a Delta Dr. Pepper. Spaceman Spiff, dude, thanks so much. We're doing Kerbal Boot Camp, man, and I'm having fun doing it. I'm not going to lie. What was that, 390, but 0.5 tons versus 0.1 tons. Let's see which one's better. Let's build a kind of a, let's build a little bit of an, no, let's keep it simple, Doss. Keep it simple. No, let's make it interesting. You guys have been so patient with me, and I appreciate it. There's, there have been people who have been here the entire stream so far, which is so freaking awesome. Let's grab the little uh, standoffs. Y'all know me. Still the same old G. Putting those things on there. Got to find a part that will radially attach. This RCS fuel tank will radially attach. Crunch 1. Welcome to Kerbal Boot Camp, man. We'll get you the moon if you hang out with us enough. That's what we're trying to do. Um, for some reason, squad, I don't know, squad, any squad reps here? Rouse, Dowser, Casper, someone. Why does this not radially attach? Why doesn't it have SRF attach mode as the tag? I don't get it. This tank, which carries fuel, does not have it. This tank, which carries RCS, will surface attach. I can put it there. This tank, I can't. Ugh. So the only thing I'm going to use this tank for is a surface attachment point right like that. It's got RCS in it, but we don't need RCS. Just emptying it out. Um, hey, another thing right quick. Recent change. Was it 0 0.24? 0 0.24 that there were 0.24. Two, three, five. They made the pods have monopropellant storage in it. Originally, they were thinking that the Kerbal, with his little RCS jetpack, would refill it from the monoprop in the pod, but that hasn't been implemented yet. Um, we're not using monoprop on this engine, on this mission, so I can remove it. We don't really need it. And then I can put these little fuel tanks there. 
just because I like how it looks. And I'm going to use these engines. Guys, these little 48 7S engines, OP as heck. They're so overpowered. They weigh nothing. They have good efficiency. They give you 30 thrust. They're just great engines to use. Um, let's slap, again, this these little, the smallest form factor. And putting them all like that makes it look kind of cool, I think. Um, let's see here. That's our little lander craft. Let us... Ah, Kerbal Engineer. Kerbal Engineer. <laughs> I've referenced West Coast rap two days in a row. <laughs> oh my gosh. Use a metal girder. These I like better. Um, They look better. Baconilla, and they weigh less. Um, The weight on these guys is 0 .02 versus the metal girder that's 1.25. Um, these are massless, but they don't really give me enough standoff. I like these. Did you mean use a metal girder, like use a metal girder for the surface attach? I could have done that as well. I just, I kind of like how that looks. Um, plus, we could totally do, you know, this sort of stuff. Anyways, Kerbal Engineer. Here's Kerbal Engineer. We'll put it right here. 1764 meters per second of delta V. That's a lot, and it looks like those parts are actually flowing fuel. Let's see. Let's just make sure. This is a little bit more advanced of a topic. Yeah, that doesn't change it. Interesting. So with these, I don't have to worry about the fuel flow. Um, if it wasn't flowing fuel for some reason, it would say does not cross-feed fuel. Like if I look at this. Okay, it actually cross-feeds fuel, so we're good. So this craft right here, 2.45 thrust to weight with a 1764. You know what that means. What does that mean? This is an interplanetary, not interplanetary. This is a ship for space operations, right? This ship right here really only needs a thrust to weight of 1.0. It could even do 0.5. It's just how long your burns are going to take. I could totally put more fuel on this puppy, and I am. Because we want to play around a lot with it. Let me go grab this fuel tank. Like that. Let me put these guys back on. Like that. Got the little engine to sell sort of deal going on. I don't know what's going on with that. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Seems legit. <laughs> Apparently the welder didn't show up for work today. There's not even a collusion mesh between them. <laughs> I guess they're just going to magically stay there with Kerbal Magic. That's okay. Look at that. 1.69 and 2600 meters per second of Delta V. That's even an atmosphere... 3,000 meters per second of Delta V. Guys, we could land this on the moon, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Um, we can do the transfer. We can do all of our stuff with the moon with this. So now let's build the lifter for it, right? Who here remembers the numbers for the lifter? I'm not going to say them out loud. If you remember the numbers, the thrust weight and the Delta V for the lifter stage and the kicker stage, type them into chat. I will not say it. Wow, what am I going to talk about? Uh, I think I'm just going to put this thing here. <laughs> I also need some power generation on there, by the way. Let me do the power generation right quick. If you remember the numbers for the lifter, toss them in the chat. One day, by the way, guys, if I can get the stream going enough, if I get supporters and I get donations and that sort of stuff, um, I totally want to start doing giveaways. And I want them to be actual based on questions and stuff like that. So if you're paying attention and you answer the questions, you get entered into a giveaway or something like that. I'm not exactly sure how it goes. Um, but... If you know the numbers, type them into the chat <laughs> while I build the stuff. And then I'll come back, and after, after I'm done building it, I will scroll back. I'm building the kicker right now. You should know the numbers for the kicker. That's too big. That's good. Let's grab this engine. That's good. Two, seven, three, nine, seven, eight. Ooh, wait, I can't whisper. I should mute my mic because <laughs> I totally say the numbers out loud. <laughs> Let's see here. One of these, maybe. Okay. It's almost like the kicker should look like this. Yeah, I'll take it. Well, I'll do it. Yeah, it's good. That's good. Atmosphere. Good word, atmosphere. It's totally quiet. We can listen to the music. <laughs> And then I gotta build the lifter. Remember the kicker stage, the orbital insertion stage is first. The lifter here. In fact, I think I'm gonna actually put a little bit of reaction control on this. This part right here. I'm gonna put a little bit of reaction control in there just because I've got the leeway. Now the lifter stage. Maybe you know what I need for the lifter stage. Maybe you've already put it in chat. Who knows? I'll find out when I'm done building this rocket. <laughs> the suspense. 
Will this work? I don't know if this will work. I'm just playing around. I've never... Guys, I'd never build the same rocket twice. I always try to build it from scratch. I think that makes the stream more interesting. Um, I try to do new... I mean, y'all know me. I like the, the little engine nacelle sort of setup. But I really try to do different crafts just for people who join the streams. Even though I'm covering the same topic, you get to see different things every time I do this. Let's go ahead and put that there. Not exactly enough. This number. This thingy. Let's see if this is going to work. Those two things put together are a little bit less than that tank. That's why I did it. Yeah. It'll do. That'll do. <laughs> Let's see here. Now I'm going to come back. Since the numbers are on the screen now, um, I'm going to come back to the stream. Oh, wait. Let me put some struts. Guys, anytime you use this 3X part, put struts a little bit more than halfway down there. Just do this. You don't want those things to go all weebly wobbly down at the bottom. So, that's pretty cool. Um, let me have a look here. Who typed it out in the chat? Needs the small nose cones, dude. Least. Oh, well, I put the solar panels there. <laughs> I'll just go with the solar panels for now. <laughs> I like that idea. For the surface attached. Two or three. Yeah, the small cubes weigh nothing. You are correct, Baconella. Um, I could have used these parts right here. I always try to, to respond to people that type stuff for me in chat. Baconella was saying that I could have used these for surface attachment on the end of those. Um, and then I could have attached the fuel tanks and the engines to these little cubic octo struts. Yes, I could have done that. You are absolutely correct. Good, sir. I'm using the wrong window again. Oh, my gosh. There. Let's see here. 1.7. Lignoba got 1.7 and 400 Delta V total. That's right, Lignoba got it. Brain Fried got the, the, the discrepancy. The kicker is supposed to be 1,500. The lifter is supposed to be 2,500. In fact, why don't I use this? Because I can actually scroll up. Brain Fried here got that part correct. 2,500 for the lifter, 1,500 for that. Lignoba got the thrust to weight correctly. 1.7 and 4,000 total, which is that plus that. 1.7 Delta V, yep, there's that. Plus one rockets, I'll allow it. <laughs> you know, like 15... Baconella, that's for the launch 5,150 meters per second is our first checkpoint one point yep we got that yeah y'all totally got that handman i am i need some help doing that i got to figure that out <laughs> if you don't have 10k delta v in your landing engine you aren't flying a rocket <laughs> ah yes i have nightbot i just have that part turned off let's see here the darker are lighter than the yellow one um no not true luis not true anymore is it because check it out um Run over the construction. Hitman, explain what you mean by that. Run over the construction while I go over this. They retweaked it again. Look. This thing here is 0.12 mass, 0.8 pitch torque. This one here is double the pitch torque with almost the same mass. So the thing about this one is it now more expensive. That one's 1200 bucks versus 600 for this one. But you do get almost double the torque from this in the, la the latest rebalance. It used to be that those two things were basically the same. There used to be a different algorithm they would use, and they got rid of that. Now this one actually has almost double the pitch torque of that one, 8 versus 15, with just about the same mass. This one's a little bit more massive. So that one just costs more, really, is the thing. And then this one gives out 30. So, uh, yeah. What did I just get there? Less mass. Never really used them. Yeah. Hitman, Hitman, did you explace? <laughs> Levelicious. <laughs> <laughs> Skunk Slayer, dude, welcome to Kerbal Boot Camp. We're getting you to the moon. I'm, if I have time, dude, I'm going to do space planes and I'm going to do a space station as well. Basically everything. Let's see here. <laughs> I rely on Delta J. Change in judgment. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, you could have just typed them out, Baconella. <laughs> you could have just watched what I was doing. I should have muted the stream and hid it. Why to use reaction wheel? Oh, um, Mellow Red. Dude, Dazarn. Also, welcome to Kerbal Bootcamp. Mellow Red, um, when I get to the lander design, I will cover that. We're going to orbit this craft around the moon, actually put it in orbit and come home. And after that, I'm going to build a lunar lander. I'm going to teach you how to build the lander, how to balance it, how to make it controllable, how to pilot it to the moon, and how to actually land the darn thing. So that's what we're going to do next. Um, remind me when I get to that part of the segment, and I will totally answer that question in detail for you. The difference between reaction wheels versus RCS, 
etc. Et Long story short, RCS cost fuel, reaction wheels cost electricity. Electricity is a renewable resource if you point something at the sun or let something decay. <laughs> Let's see here. This is the station that was giving me issues. Oh wait, that's not it. Ah, yes. Whoa, that's actually a really cool looking station. <laughs> so let's get on with this thing here. We have a great craft here. I like this craft. It is not atmo mode, right? Yes, it's not atmo mode. Our lifter. Y'all got it right. Lifter stage 1.7. That says 1.6. With 2,500. Okay. Kicker stage 1.5 at least with 1,500. Okay, we got that. 4,156 tells me that this thing right here will be able to get us into orbit and then some. Which is a good thing. And I've got that on there, right? Yes, I do. Um, what else did I miss on this? I'm, intent is not to land. Let me toss some of these on here since we haven't been using them. Guys, you all have seen that I haven't been using this for the smaller rockets. You don't really need the stability enhance enhancers. However, when you get to bigger rockets, you will need the stability enhancers. Um, trust me. I mean, you could always, guys, you could put science on the pod here. If you wanted to get, like, a uh, gravioli detector, you could toss a little gravioli experiment on here. You could toss a goo container in here somewhere. You could get a science junior. Don't want to cover up the logo. <laughs> so we'll put that there. I mean, now I've just, you know, I've just got a couple science experiments. No big deal. I've got uh, power generation right there. I don't really have any power storage. Let's put some power storage on batteries. What else did I miss? Let me know what else I missed in the chat. Poor favor. Ah, corn chips. Thank you. I'll definitely show that. I'll definitely show that. No, answer the panel queue. What was that? Uh, are they still? Alright, <laughs> that chat is scrolling. I'm going to look at it over here. Let me make sure I caught everything, because I totally want to answer the questions to this. The entire point. Uh, Craze 77, so there is a delta medium number required to reach the moon. Yes, I will bring that up in just a second. Corn chips, thank you for reminding me that. Um, pretty Davy. Da -da -da, work in progress. Stock panels. Uh, extra crispy, or ecstasy crispy. Ecstasy crispy or extra crispy. <laughs> Um, the electricity generators, they won't run out. Um, they will run for everything. But it's an RTG, it's a radioisothermic, radioisotopic thermal generator, which uses the decay of a radio... <laughs> we use them in real life, right? Viger, Voyager has them on it. Um, radioactive, decay, def, radioactive decay heats something up, we use that to generate electricity. Via what cycle is it? Carnot's engine. I can't remember the cycle. Ah, I can't remember. Somebody will know what the cycle is. Um, but it doesn't model it. They won't run out of energy. They'll go forever. Let's see here. Map. I'll get that. RTGs, they don't decay. Generate power forever. Yep. No answer the panel queue. I think I just missed that. Kerchatovium. Okay, Lewis. <laughs> model, model everything. Antenna. Okay, antenna. Peltier. Is it Peltier? Craggles? Scraggles? The Peltier process? The Peltier cycle? that we use with the radioisothermic generator to uh, generate electricity. Uh, let's see here. Comms. I liked that idea. So we'll definitely do comms. In fact, I'm going to use this comm. I won't just put a little antenna on it. I'll use, like, uh, it's under science. This antenna. 0.03, that's not going to really screw with us that much. Nope. We're not going to land, so we don't need gear and that sort of stuff. Was that part massless? It is not massless. How about that? We should be okay, though. <laughs> that antenna. See, this this part has really weird collusion meshes, right? It's like the parts hover over it. That's hovering over it. Apparently, the welder didn't show up for work there. That, we can see daylight in between that. That part just has a really weird collusion mesh. The mesh doesn't match the model, basically. They use thermocouples. Dude, this guy should be able to answer it. HVAC engineer. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It should be a steam generator in space. <laughs> What else did I miss? I've got, let's do the checklist. I've got command and control. I've got power storage. I've got power generation. I've got main fuel. I've got main propulsion. I've got a chute to come home. I've got a decoupler to get rid of me. I've got a Kerbal en Engineer. I think we're good here. I think we're good. Um, the last thing we need to check. There was a really good question in chat over there about the subway map. So it was, how much delta V does it take to circularize around the moon, right? And I've got this handy dandy, <laughs> well actually, here for people earlier, here's my Dr. Pepper can. Observe it in all its majesty. <laughs> Somebody has skinned me of a Dr. Pepper fuel tank. 
I didn't know how to put it in as a separate mod. That was just a reskin using texture replacer, and I want to put it in as a separate mod. Um, if anybody knows how to do that, send me a message because I could totally use some help with it. Anyways, I was actually going to go over here to the subway map, and we were asking how much delta V it's going to take me to get to the moon and circularize around the moon. We've already seen that it takes about 860 to get a encounter with the moon. How much is it going to cost us to actually circularize around the moon? The subway map here. The subway map tells you how much delta V you need to go from situation A to situation B. For example, Kerbin situation landed on Kerbin to low Kerbin orbit cost 4550, 4500, etc., etc. To go from low Kerbin orbit situation to a lunar intercept 860, we've already seen that work, right? It was 860, 853, something like that. So, lunar intercept 860. To go from low Kerbin orbit to a Minmus intercept 920. To go from low Kerbin orbit to break out of Kerbin sphere of influence, which is this right here, Kerbin intercept 950. To go from low Kerbin orbit all the way out to like uh, Moho, 950 plus 730, you can add it up as you go along. It's like fares, right? It's like this part, this ride of the subway from this station to this station costs you 950. The ride from this station to this station costs you 730. If your rocket, <laughs> if your rocket doesn't have 950 plus 730 in its pocket, it's not going to complete the ride. It's going to actually die somewhere around here and never get that Moho intercept. But that's how the subway map works. We can actually see that it's going to cost us another 640. That'll be important when we design a lander. 640 to land, and because of the way this is, 640 to take back off again and go back to this low lunar orbit. So this is the subway map. Can somebody please put a link to it in the chat? I would really appreciate it if it hasn't already been done. Um, but we are going to need 860 for the lunar intercept, 210 for the circularization. I think we will all be all on our way with that. But good idea to put the sub subway map there. So here's our craft. The only thing that we are missing on this craft right now is the 1.7 on the pad. Could we fly it with 1.6? Yes, we can. And I will do it just to illustrate that that's the case. Let's fix our staging here. There we go. I just fixed the staging. Check the staging. Again, we needed 200. Actually, we needed 860 plus 200 for the transfer. This is definitely more than 860 plus 200. So this craft should be able to go in orbit around the moon and come home. Make, all our sta make sure all our staging is good. Step one, release the launch clamp, activate the main motors. Good. I have three main motors. I have three launch clamps. Step two, Fire that decoupler, activate the kicker stage. Fire that decoupler, activate the kicker stage. I like it. Step three, decouple that and activate our little craft motors. Decouple that, activate our craft motors. I love it. Stage four, this is when we're coming home. Decouple that, that's good. Stage five, pop the chute, float on down, and land on the planet. So, let's see here. Dude, blue zero. If that was a link, thank you so much. I didn't click on it yet, but thank you so much. Um... Ninja Game Lover D4, welcome. Sure, Hitman, you're welcome to post a link to your craft picture over there. I can't say I'll look at it right away, but I will come back to it and look at it for you, man. I totally, you're always here, and I totally appreciate you always being here. I do try to do that, but uh, let's get on out to the moon. I, I'm, I'm also going to prove that this is 1.6. We can still get there. This is a uh, Mooner flyby. It's the Boot Mooner flyby. How about that, Mark One? I love putting Mark in my crafts. The Boot Mooner Flyby Mark 1. Save. Launch. Dr. Pepper. Oh, gosh. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> ah, uh, yes. T. SAS Engage. Panel Lock. Throttle Up. 1.06 on the pad, so we definitely want full throttle. Jeb, you ready, buddy? Three, two, one. Space. Now watch this. 1.6. Watch our atmospheric efficiency. We're still going to go to space, y'all. We could be 1.5 on the pad. We could be 2.0 on the pad. Remember, we could be 100 thrust weight on the pad. 1.7 makes all of these numbers work. Starting with 1.7 makes me hit the checkpoints. It makes me have the correct acceleration. It, it just makes everything work. So I definitely like 1.7 on the pad. Moon or dust boot. <laughs> and I think, uh, what was that? T-Game had some good points over there. The subway map that we show, that's the best case. Always design with more than this in mind. This is just kind of the best case, the situation nominal, situation normal sort of setup. Um, 
If you look at the subway map, don't design your cap to have exactly that much. Look at that. There's 50 at 155, 95% atmospheric efficiency. So you can see we're still pretty much good to go. Look at that big mountain. That's pretty. And second checkpoint, 10,000 meters, 260 on the clock down here. Atmospheric efficiency will be right at 99 when we do that. And then we're going to start our gravity turn. The gravity turn turns to the east because we're jumping off the moving sidewalk. That is the rotation of Kerbin. Just go ahead and lean it over. Just lean it over. Another real cool thing, Kerbal Engineer actually shows you the burn time. So I know I've got 30 seconds left in this stage. Not only does it show you the delta V remaining, but it also shows you the burn time. I use that sometimes. Not so much for the launches, but when you're doing rendezvous or suicide burns, that sort of stuff. It's good, good times. Gonna burn at 45 degrees. Remember this line right here that actually says 90 is 45 degrees. Also 90 on the nav ball, that's east. Zero is north, 90 degrees is east. 180 is south, 270 is west. That's how that works. There's 50, remember at 50, wow that was good. We turn and burn, straight into our orbit. We're gonna put this guy up at about a book. Da -da 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 -da. Just go ahead and burn with the orbit, straight prograde with the orbit. Until we get to, I'm going to do 85. Just because. So we're just burning straight prograde. This is to orbit mode. Make sure it's not surface mode. Make sure it's orbit mode. And burn straight prograde with the orbit until we get to 85. We're going to be going up out of the atmosphere here. We've got 1334 in the tank. Oh, 1337 by freaking 3. <laughs> Come over here. Click on your Apo apps. Same thing we've done over and over again, but this is boot camp. I am trying to drill it into you. Click on your Apo apps. Pull the green ball out until I get a peri apps. Once I get a peri apps, pull this back so that my Apo apps comes back. It's really just a really efficient way to do it. Pull that back like that. Then give it some more until the peri apps and the Apo apps switch places like that. That means that's going to be 87 versus 85. That's okay. Take a little bit off. Try to put them maybe side by side. 85 by 85. I like it. Then we're going to execute that burn. Same way we've always executed the burn, right? In fact, I haven't done this explanation. 48 second burn. Half of 48 seconds. 24. Remember, I want half of my burn before the node. Half of my burn after the node. Come over here. Right now, we're not going around the planet. Remember, the entire thing, the entire thing of an orbit is that I'm going around the planet so fast that I'm falling but missing. I'm falling around the planet. I'm going around the planet so fast that the planet is curving away from me at the same rate that I'm falling towards it. That's what an orbit is. So right now, we're not going fast enough. We want to miss the planet, but we're not going to miss it. We're going to go out there, and the planet is going to curve less quickly than we're going to fall towards it. When I light this at 24... I'm making myself go around the planet faster and faster and faster. Faster and faster and faster is all I'm doing. And as I get faster, I start to get better off with missing the planet. See, I'm missing a little bit more. I'm missing a little bit more. The planet's still curving. I'm still being pulled down by gravity. I'm falling faster than it's curving. That's not an orbit. I'm missing it some more. You see, it just comes. It keeps on stretching out. But I want to get going so fast that as the planet curves away, I miss it. It's so cool. Who needs math? I'm just falling and missing the planet. That's all an orbit is. <laughs> I'm missing it more and more and more. And you'll see how crucial those last meters per second are. All of a sudden, thoop, I've missed the planet. And then, thoop, I've got my orbit. Now I'm going around the planet so fast that I'm falling towards it and I keep on missing it. Five, four, three, two, one. Da, 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 da. There we go. What am I at? Eight, four by eight, seven. Good enough. It doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't need to be an exact perfect circular burn. What do I have? I still have 187. <laughs> Gangster here. 187 in the tank. <laughs> we can use that 187 for our moon or burn. I'm actually going to F5 right here, and I'll show you something that can be confusing sometimes, right? Let's go over here, and I've got 187 in the tank. I've got 3K in the little craft, which is awesome. Um, while we're sitting here, let's go ahead and make sure we've got good electric charge. Where's the sun? There's the sun. I'll just extend those. I'll roll over. <laughs> this totally looks like a dude going... <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Didn't intend for that. But uh, 
Anyways, let's turn off the surface view. I've got 187 in the tank. I've got almost 3K in the little craft itself. That's really cool. Let's go plan that Mooner transfer. And remember, the Mooner transfer is not hard. Step one, find the moon. There it is. Step two, click on the moon, set as target. Excellent. Step three, put the moon right there so it's rising over Kerbin's horizon. Rising over the horizon? <laughs> It's right there. The moon is just coming up, right? Step four, tilt up just a little bit and put a node right here. Like that. Remember, the trick is I want to see the moon on the horizon through the node. That's all that it is. See the moon through the horizon on the node. That's how simple it is. Step five, grab the green thingy. Pull it until this number right here says 860. <laughs> And 860! And that's a Mooner flyby. That is actually not a bad Mooner flyby. Um, I'm going to get a little bit lower parry apps. Remember last time we were going for the free return trajectory? This time I have plenty of Delta V in the craft, so I fully anticipate um, circularizing my orbit, going into an actual orbit of the moon as opposed to just a flyby like we did last time. So I'm not worried about the free trajectory, I'm worried about what my moon parry apps is. So I can click on that to make it stick. Again, if you click on one of these little tabs, you can make it stick. Usually they only appear if you highlight over it. Come over here, and let's just put a little C. Less makes me go lower to the moon. And I'm going to put that right about 30. You don't have to do this. You can circularize anywhere. In fact, it doesn't matter. Look, I'm going to circularize at 81. You don't have to be that much of a stickler at it. So I've got an 860 meter per second burn, which is going to take us 26 seconds. <laughs> and that will get us with this Mooner trajectory. So now that I've got this node planned, let's time warp up to it. That's going to be in 24 minutes, 26 seconds total. 13 is half of that, so we're going to do it at T minus 13. Let's fast forward. If you know what's going to happen, type it in the chat. I love that. Because something bad is going to happen that is going to make this transfer more difficult. If you know what bad is going to happen, type it into the chat now. And I'm just going to get up with within maybe five minutes of it or something. Seven, six, five. All right, good deal. So, I will just go ahead and do the burn. If you know what's going to happen that's going to make the burn difficult, type it into the chat. All the information you need to figure it out is on the screen right now, much less me sitting here talking to you and telling you what it is. <laughs> but uh, that is our burn. I'm going to quick save. I see the chat scrolling. I hope that's people telling me what I've done wrong. Not really wrong. I mean, is it really wrong if I know what's going to happen and I fully expect it? <laughs> Let's go find our node with our little football goal. Football referee here. If you're in Europe, I apologize. I know you don't care about fo care about football. Where's there? It is down there. And I will go ahead. I mean, honestly, my space ops is I don't leave solar panels engaged during burns unless it's a uh, ion craft. It's just a space operation safety thing. Docking, rendezvousing, doing burns, I retract my solar panels. I don't know if that's a legitimate thing. It's just something I do. Um, let me go ahead and go on up to here, and I will do the burn, then I'll check the chat to see how many people figured out what was going to go wrong. Three, two, one. Again, T-13 is where I want to be. Sometimes I have to pay attention. 26, 25, there we go. So let's do the burn. There's T minus 13. Let's start the burn. I'm doing the burn. Here's the burn. Look at my burn. 4.5 thrust. Wait a dang minute. <laughs> that engine ran out of fuel. I can't do the burn. I'm going to have to stage. Dang it. Now my thrust away. Now the burn is 39 seconds instead of 26. What the deuce? The problem was <laughs> that stage that we were on didn't have enough delta V to complete the burn. The burn. And the resultant craft had a different thrust to weight. And so the burn time is not what the original estimate was. When Kerbal Space Program estimates it, it estimates it given the current stage. And it doesn't realize if the current stage doesn't have enough delta V to actually make the burn. This can be really bad if this was an ion or if this was a, uh, yeah, an ion craft or a nuclear craft that had a really poor thrust to weight. It would have been really bad because it would have gone from like a 30 second burn all the way down to like a free, or all the way up to like a five minute burn. And that is not good. There's that. We still should have been able to get to the moon. 
And there are ways that we could have prevented that. How is my... Yeah, look, we're still good, right? In this specific instance, we didn't quite get 180. I think I could give it a little bit more. Let's see if I can lower that down. Nope, that's increasing it, actually. I need to go retrograde. Screet. If you do something in one direction and it doesn't do what you want, you can always go in the other direction. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 87, 60. Good enough right there. Um, so, let me go over. While we're going out to the moon, we've got the encounter. We're going to circularize out there. I'll talk about that when we get into the sphere of influence. What's my time warp? Time to the moon. That's going to be too slow. Let's go one more. That's going to be too fast. <laughs> Let me go check the chat. Yeah, of course, y'all totally got it. You messaged me about Dr. Pepper, Special Forces guy. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. I actually need some more Dr. Pepper. Can mod. Can mod. Oh, dude. Dude, Special Forces guy. Thank you so much for the, for, uh, the can mod, dude. I really appreciate that. I will catch the uh, message after the stream here. Um, or when I take a break, I'll, I'll get to the message. Let me time warp that down a little bit. Let me go over. It looks like lots of people knew what was going to go on. Because I made such a big deal of it, right? <laughs> Let's see here. Ear pads? Wait, what? Hamster dance. The kick is good. Police hands up. <laughs> we had both touchdown. Double F5 for double safety. <laughs> Let's see here. What else did I miss? Did I miss anything else? Oh, HVAC engineer, dude, that's an awesome link. And it's got the Voyager. Nice, dude. Thank you so much for posting that link. If you want more information, uh, HVAC engineer there posted a link, which I will repost. This is totally courtesy of HVAC engineer. If you're interested in the actual RTGs on the actual Voyager spacecraft, um, the power section of that, thank you so much for doing that. Let's see here. Did I miss anything else? Double F5 for double safety. <laughs> Goal! <laughs> Different football. <laughs> as long as you don't have those little Vesuvula things, whatever they're called. Uh, new ear pads, Logitech and G90, dude, I don't know. <laughs> Look at that, exactly 860 meters per second. Isn't it close, right? No fuel. The staging. Someone will knock on my door when I'm about to... <laughs> Usernames are overrated. Dude! Anthare 09. I'm not to the moon yet, am I? Nope. Anthare 09, welcome to Kerbal Boot Camp. We're going from zero to the moon in just a couple hours worth of streaming. If you've never played before, um, I am trying to prove that it's not as intimidating as it has to be. I'm not facing the correct board in our trade. Actually, Sword, you were right. I wasn't facing the right way. No lights. <laughs> Levelicious. Run out of fuel mid burn and go to the next stage. It looks like the first person who put it in there was Baconella, so good job, Baconella. What happened was the kicker stage, like T Game said, the kicker stage is going to run out before the burn's done. And that's exactly what happened. But since we were just going to the moon, it's not a very complicated burn. We were still okay. If we were going from a kicker stage with 4.0 thrust to weight all the way down to an ion stage that had like 0.1 thrust to weight, that would have killed us. That burn time would have been totally wrong. Vuvuzelas. Yeah, is that it? Vesuvulas. <laughs> and I checked the moon off. We're good to go. Let's get to the moon, y'all. Wow. Draugr. <laughs> yes. Do your eyes glow blue? Thanks for joining. I'm not sure that you're going to be the best suited Kerbal Space pilot. Who would be a better pilot, Jeb or an undead guy from Skyrim? I don't know. All I know is that it's totally obvious when you're a dragger that's going to wake up and I just freaking shoot you with the bow and get a sneak attack in and kill you before you even wake up. Those tombs got so freaking tedious. The cairns and the freaking barrows and all that stuff got so freaking tedious. It's just like, step one, level your bow skill. Step two, get a bow that sets things on fire when it hits it. Step three, level your sneak attack. Step four, pay attention to the difference between an entity and a background polygon. <laughs> and know which ones to shoot before they wake up so that they set on fire. Sneak is good too. I spent so many hours sneaking around the freaking tombs and shooting guys that never even bothered waking up to attack me. Here's our Moonar Sphere of Influence. We don't want to make this too complicated, so we'll just get on into the Moon Sphere of Influence. Again, same story. We're going to exit Kerbin Sphere of Influence there. Don't talk to me about InBody. Now we're going in around the Moon. Now we actually need to plan a maneuver node for our circularization burn. Pretty darn easy. When I'm trying to circularize, I click on the 
this case it's a periaps or an apoaps when I'm taking off. There's the moon. Same story. I'm not trying to circularize. I'm trying to actually get captured. So instead of burning prograde, which is what increases my orbit, it would actually make me miss the moon even more. Um, I want to burn retrograde, which is pulling this little green X thingy. Burning retrograde will slow me down, and slowing me down is what lets the moon's gravity get a hold of me. So I start going around the moon. Again, right now, I'm going so far, I'm going so fast past the moon that I am going, I'm falling a lot slower than the moon is curving away from me. I want to slow down until I'm falling towards the moon at the same rate that the moon is curving away from me. So I'm going to slow down so the moon can catch me. And I'm going to set my parry at like 15. Let's set the parry apps to 15. So watch, they're going to switch. Thoop! And now I can click on the parry apps. 46, I'm going to set it all the way down to eh, maybe 20. There's 20. Now nah, 15 is more exciting. <laughs> There's 16. 16 is a good compromise. So now we can see we're going to cost 229 meters per second. We have 2273 in the tank. We're good to go. This is not very much. Again, what is it? Two, 299. So just about 300 to circularize. What did the subway map say? Circularizing around the room. 210, 14 kilometers. So, meh, pretty close. I mean, close enough. <laughs> not exactly 300. The Mooner Encounter was definitely good. But this one, we're coming in a little bit inclined, it looks like. Uh, that's okay. So let's get this done. Let's circularize with the moon. Find my target. Do, 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 do. An hour, 24 minutes. Where's the moon? There's the moon. Bigger than Kerbin. And we just have to time warp up. Let me show you Kerbal Alarm Clock right quick. Kerbal Alarm Clock. Add. It automatically detects that I have a node. And all I have to do is click Add Alarm. Now if I time warp, Kerbal Alarm Clock will stop the time warp a minute before the node. And that gives me time to check chat. What's up? Mad Monster Gaming! I took my head off. <laughs> I don't want to talk about InBody, and I don't need math for my space program. I mean, I need math, it's just that the computer's doing the math for me. Ingy. <laughs> Let me check the chat, see if I thought anything else. See if I missed anything else. Again, if you have any questions, if you're new to the chat here, if you're watching me, what's going on? I'm Dos Valdez, this is Kerbal Space Bootcamp. Kerbal Bootcamp. You are more than welcome to ask me questions if you have any sort of questions. If I'm doing something, you want me to re-explain it, you want me to demonstrate something. The entire point is I'm live. I'm not on YouTube. I can answer your questions right now. Um, that is the entire purpose of Kerbal Bootcamp, Kerbal Space Academy. Ask questions. I don't bite. If you want to get my attention, you've seen in the chat where it gets highlighted red. It gets highlighted red when somebody uses the word DOS or uses the word question. That lets me scroll back through the chat. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to live in the danger zone? Dude, I'll go down that low. We just won't be able to time warp is the thing. <laughs> Let me scroll back, see if I missed any questions. There was that. I saw that. Staging. All right. Again, Special Forces, thank you so much for the message. Check my moon. There was that. Vesuvius is a volcano. <laughs> Ambulatory cortex. My reaction to people... <laughs> Doss's reaction to people following him makes me want to unfollow him just to follow him again. <laughs> JK2001, ew, okay. Know me, the best pilot ever, Zogs, what's going on? <laughs> Mighty Mouse, welcome Mighty Mouse. A lot of people still here. Doesn't want to talk about Embody. Squad doesn't want to talk about Embody. Shh. <laughs> Honestly, this game is enough fun. Just because you're orbiting the moon doesn't mean that the Earth's gravity is not affecting you. Is, is what we're talking about there. And the game doesn't calculate that. Only one body affects you from a gravitational perspective at a time in the game. In body means there are multiple bodies affecting your gravity at the same time. Gravity gradients, gravity fluctuations, reasons you fall out of orbit, all sorts of things. Kerbal Space Program is freaking awesome because it's simple enough that it can get you interested in this sort of stuff, especially for younger kids. I play Kerbal Space Academy with my daughter. She loves seeing the Kerbals go and do stuff. She loves to drive rovers as her favorite thing. Um, but it gets people interested in it. If it was all 100% accurate in-body physics, freaking gravitational gradients and tidal locking and all that sort of stuff, go play Orbiter. <laughs> Actually, does Orbiter even, even do that? 
I think Kerbal Space Program is a, is a perfect balance between fun and realism. It gets you the basic concepts. There's gravity. I go faster to miss the moon, that sort of stuff, to miss the, miss the surface. But we don't have to worry about falling out of orbit. 9K, wasted all the fuel. Moon moving towards you, yeah. Danger zone. Space planes in the hangar deck. Dude, Mighty Mouse, I totally do. Kerbal Space Academy sessions. Irish, take it easy, man. Thanks for following earlier. You, you've been here for a while. I'm not sure where you got the impression that you're allowed to leave boot camp whenever you want. <laughs> but take it easy, man. Thanks a lot for hanging out. 9K needs less fuel for the lander. Return to transfer ship. Easy to rendezvous back. What? Uh, Mad Monster Gaming. Can somebody post a link for Mad Monster for the subway map? Um, you can also Google... Nah, no, that's not it. Thanks, Luis. <laughs> um, you can also Google KSP subway map, and that's the first result that comes back. A lot. Plan for the next episode. Crunch. We're doing boot camp over the weekend. Um, I think I'll do another type of boot camp, like a more advanced boot camp tomorrow where we talk about other stuff. Um, but the boot camps are longer stream. Next on Monday, what am I going to do? I haven't decided yet. What do you all want me to do? Type it in chat. U.S. is going to start sending people into space again. No, we send people to space, brain fried. We just have to pay Russia to do it right now. We use the Soyuz modules to get people to and from the ISS. How freaking, how freaking ah, ironic is it that we're paying Russia to get U.S. astronauts into space because we made a really cool shuttle that wasn't very efficient at doing what we needed to do. That's what you get for going 40 years without advancing your technology very much. Moon rockets sent people... Yeah, bot rides. There you go. Bot rides on Russian rockets. We got that. Core chips. Thanks, dude, for helping out the Delta V map. <laughs> you don't leave. <laughs> nice. My voice is too high to make a good drill, drill instructor, I think. Domestic launches. Third session. Yeah, actually, Levelicious, they just gave a lot of money to Texas, the state of Texas. SpaceX did. They're going to make a launch facility in Brownsville, um, just south of where I grew up. Let's see here. Two Gs or two Ts. I don't even know what that means. Brain fried, we're doing that next. We're doing that next. Let us. Here's the moon. Let's get around the moon. That's enough of me talking. Let's go into orbit around the moon. We all know what's going to happen. Fast forward. There's the moon. Kerbal alarm clock. Screech like a catcher's mitt. Slows me down. <laughs> Thank you. Delete on close. Close. 15 second burn. Add it to 16. Half of that is 8. T minus 8 seconds is where we're going to begin our circularization burn. 9. 8. Circularization burn. Here we go. And... 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 I mean, I totally... I want to go see a launch. I miss the shuttle launches. I feel so bad about missing the shuttle launches. I always wanted to see a shuttle launch, and I did not do it before they... I was trying to get to one of the last two or three launches, and it never worked out with my work schedule. I was traveling for work, and I couldn't go down there. I'm so bummed that I missed the shuttle launches, though. I don't care if it was inefficient. I don't care if it cost lots of money. It's freaking awesome. And we spend a lot more money on that than on things like football and freaking iPhones. So. <laughs> yes, Solo Asylum, that's what I was just saying. I mean, that's...